Good afternoon, everybody. It is May 14th, 2023. This is the fourth update of the Super Tunia uh, planter boxes. Again, some are on the railings, some are on the windows. If that's the first time for you tuning in. Uh, it's already been a month, believe it or not. Today is the fourth update now. So this is what you're looking at is one month of growth since being planted. And as you can already see, even though this is the first year we've planted them with different types in the box, you could see that the bubble gum seems to always be the one, the bubble gum vista seems to be the one that grows the most profusely out of all the others. They also have the bigger leaves as well, but nonetheless, everything seems to be filling in exactly as designed. Um, the red ones, which are the black cherry, they grow the slowest out of the bunch, but they'll still get there. Um, and it's good that I space the bubble gums further apart so they don't kind of just swallow up one side. That's one thing that I uh, planned out when I did this. So again, this is the first window box and it's the biggest. Only on this side, you can see that it's actually already pouring over the box and moving its way down towards the ground. And if you watch last year's series, this was only bubblegum vistas. It was insane. It got to the point where I was having to trim these hedges down lower than the actual siding of the house and down by the bricks because eventually this is all gonna fill in and it's gonna become like one gigantic curtain of flowers. And that's gonna be exciting to see. Now the next window boxes are actually gonna be on the railing. These are looking really nice so far. And we haven't had too many rough days with the temperature. And we also haven't had too many bad storms. So there hasn't been any, in my opinion, any real damage done to the flowers. As you know, when you do have a bad storm, the rain will knock a lot of flowers off. It could also cause mold on some of the flowers. And obviously the weight of the water will make a lot of the flowers close up. But nonetheless, as you can see here, these ones are starting to pour over probably the most for the railings. And one thing that I've been doing that I, I'm not doing with anything else, I guess I'm kind of just experimenting with it, is only on this box, I've been actually plucking away all the dead flowers, or as they call it, deadheading. And you don't have to do it. But what that means is if you see the differences, if you come over here, you can see how there's a bunch of the, dent, the dead flowers here and you can kind of just pick them off like that. Well, I've been doing that every day. Only takes about five or 10 minutes and I've been doing it to this box. So I'm interested to see if it will do anything different in terms of how fuller it grows or how, how much more healthy it looks or it might not do anything at all. Now, obviously, when you look at it up close, it looks a little cleaner than something like that, as you can see in that section, but you won't see that on this one because I removed them, but it doesn't seem to do anything as far as growing it, making it grow faster, because look at this one and look at that one, and they're getting the same amount of sunlight and watering. So we'll see if it makes a difference. Over here to the smaller boxes, looking good. These boxes definitely get the least amount of sun per day. One thing you'll notice um, is on the one furthest to the left here, the black cherry is the slowest to grow. So that's why you see that the bubble gums are the vistas, but the blue skies in the middle, they're not a vista, but they, they grow just as almost just as good as the bubble gums. It's the black cherries that lag behind. 
Everything's looking good now. And again, these only get mm, four hours of sun per day, unfortunately. So facing that way is south. So uh, we don't really get any southern sunlight where these would just grow immense. But I'm trying everything I can do to get them to look as best as possible, which included switching over to the drip irrigation system. I've currently just started fertilizing. So since the last video, I haven't fertilized up until basically week three. But now that we're into week four, I fertilize with every single watering, believe it or not. And to just to show you quick, and again, I, I said this before, I'm gonna do a separate video just on this system. That's the fertilizer injector. It holds a gallon of fertilized water. And what happens is every single time I water, I have it on a really slow setting. And so it puts fertilizer through the drip line but not a very high concentrated amount so that it's overpowering and could damage it. But if you actually go onto the Proven Winners website, the Proven Winners, which makes the Super Tunias, if you scroll down and you read up on the Super Tunias on how to care for them, they actually recommend on their website that Super Tunias should be on a drip line and should get fertilized with like a fertilizer injection system with every watering. It says apparently that that's the most optimal way. So again, we'll see. Right now I just use the Proven Winners water soluble fertilizer. I haven't used any other fertilizer. I might try a different one later in the season. Um, but right now it's still all kind of an experiment. So that's it for this video. Thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you have any questions. And until then, see you next week.